Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I wanted to cover everything that's been going on. My last video, I was about five days post-op. I am now going to hit the six-week mark this coming Tuesday. Today's May 29th, so I'm five weeks post-op in a couple days. And I just wanted to discuss everything that went on. I'm sorry for being MIA, but I was updating my Instagram and every single day posting updates there. If you follow me, you saw that. But, um... Girl, I just really didn't have time to be every day making YouTube videos. I was so tired and I had no motivation to do my hair. It was looking crazy. Some days were swollen, some days were tough. So um, I'm just going to do like a recap of the past couple weeks. So first things first, I had to remove my own fucking drain. Um, my aunt, she's an LPN, so she helped me remove it, which I'll insert footage. But that shit was literally like, looked like almost 10 feet long inside of me, like a 10 feet iPhone charger. There you go. One, two. There we go. There we go. I was in so much pain, and my massage therapist was telling me, like, oh, you should get it professionally removed. Or maybe you should just leave it in. Um, But, because when I left um, Miami, it was too soon to get it removed because they want you to wait until, like, the fluid's gone a certain color. So it was already gone when I was here, um, like after 10 days post-op so my aunt took it out when i was almost three weeks post-op like i had to go no it was like 11 days 12 days i don't even remember i'll like post footage with like timestamps if i remember or if my phone has it saved as that or i can also check my instagram story to see and also my stitches we finally decided to remove my stitches around one month Because they were irritating me when I was laying down in the BBL pillow, mattress even. And all the material of the Faha was going against it. Anything I would wear would go against it. And they're supposed to be dissolvable, but they were like tied. So I don't know, it was like this white looking material, like plastic looking material. So we cut them out. She's knows what she's doing obviously. She's a medical professional. And then massage therapist said it was almost time for them to go out too. Um around week three I did experience a lot of itching in like my back. My stomach, my arms, I was, was like insane. I stopped taking my pain meds after the first, I want to say second week after surgery. So I didn't want to get too dependent on the Vicodin and then not have it afterward, obviously, because you need it prescribed. And if you buy them on the street, like, you're just going on the wrong path at that point, babe. Um, I did not experience much pain. It was just more discomfort and, um, you know, staying away from things like salty food, alcohol. Um, I had a drink at one week, no, at one month post-op. And then I drank today at work. I started working last week, so four weeks, almost five weeks post-op. I started working at a bar, like a little side night job. Um, and I, I can't wear my faha, obviously, with the type of uniforms we have to wear there. So me being out my faha for that long really, really, like, hurt me. I was swole, swolled up. I was in pain. I was uncomfortable. I was sore. My massage girl said you can go, um, like, at this point, I can be out of my faha for a couple hours. But try to keep it on as much as possible, obviously. On Tuesday, I'm allowed technically to sit on my butt, but I just don't want to do that yet. Like, I don't know. I'm like, kind of. Then I'm going to still use the BBL pillow unless I have to, because you have to, like, ease into it. Like, you know, use the soft couch, then sit, like, on, you know, a restaurant booth, and then go for, like, a hard chair. You know, you don't want to just sit on your ass. It's going to be uncomfortable. So I've been using this um, BBL chair I got from Recovery Bay. Um, it comes with a little side stool you can put stuff on and after surgery you can put this in the middle and it turns back into like a whole inflatable if you want to keep it and i also bought the wedge that comes with it i have the air mattress um the bbl air mattress in my room um and i've been sleeping on that i actually sold it because um, a couple of um, surgery sisters on my instagram are getting surgery soon i'm not gonna need this anymore pretty soon i can lay on my back so i sold this to them um but i can leave the link below for you guys I have had such a hard time buying clothes. My shirts are small and my pants, my hips are 46 inches and my stomach is, my waist is still 30 inches because I'm swollen. It goes down more. But um, technically I fit size small pants, 
but the butt will be kind of tight, but the waist will still be baggy. Like, I'm a Victoria's Secret, like, pajama shorts, and they're still so big on the waist. I have to, like, tighten them to the max and get shit altered. I've been getting my Faja tapered in the back, and the way you want to tell them to taper it is to leave the fabric on the outside, not on the inside. That way, it being folded will not leave a crease on your back or leave you any marks because your skin is very moldable still, so you want to put it, tell them to taper to the back. Um, what else? But that was just my experience. I was fine. Um, what else? I started smoking hookah when I was four weeks post off as well. So not so long ago. Um, I'm going to insert a video of how to insert my molds. A lot of girls have been asking me that. A lot of people were asking So this isn't the right faha. Like, this is my stage one, but I'm just using it to show you. That way my vagina won't show. I, like, put so much compression right here, but I make sure not to hit my hips. Because this is where, like, all the swelling really is. So I'll, like, put the poise pads first. And then tuck. And then I put my little triangle here, and I make sure like it's above my butt crack but not on it. And then I just like, put my shirt over to hold it in place. Obviously, this will be harder if I have my stage two, but that one's washing right now. But I do the same thing. I kind of like use. This, this part of the faha to like help me out, to like hold it in. Like you just gotta mess with it. Yeah. Okay. And then your foam should be like on your vagina. That's where it should start and go up here. And nothing should roll. If not, you need to redo it because then you're gonna get like weird marks. And then this should be like down to your vagina. So they explained to me. Watch your mouth. The hell is your problem? And then, if you want, you could take the ab compressor thing and put it over too. That's what I do. Um, is my experience? How was my experience flying back? Flying back. Um, so with Frontier Airlines, the make you sit well i think it's all airlines i'm not sure she told me for takeoff i could not use the bbl pillow i had to sit on my physical ass for takeoff well taxi takeoff So it's like 20 minutes each time. Other than that, she let me use the BBL pillow. I know a lot of girls kneel the whole flight, but I just sat on the pillow. And when my legs got numb, I would just stand in place or walk. Um, I paid for um, first class front row. So I would just pace from there to the bathroom back and forth. Stand in the bathroom for a little bit, you know, so I wasn't walking around too much. That's how I got through that three-hour flight. I took a straight flight from, um, from Miami to Boston. And I live in Providence, so I had to drive from Boston to Providence, obviously. And I laid down in the back of my mom's Jeep with a comforter and a pillow, and I was fine. Um, I had another, a couple other questions asking me, um, what exactly do I use to compress? So right, like up until last week, I was doing, um, a couple poise pads layered up wherever I was super bloated, like my lower stomach was my problem area. Um, my three foams, ab board, faha, and ab binder, obviously with a camisole underneath. Now my massage girl told me I don't have to wear foams at all times unless I'm getting swollen. So I just wear my faha with that and then. Like throughout the day and then at night I wear the ab board with it. So that's for now. 
Um, I can't wait till I feel better so I can start taking really bomb pics. Um, right now, my incisions, you can still see them in pictures, like, you know, the little holes, my light bulb holes, and where they inject the fat, but... I'm not gonna get them lasered. I'm gonna try to do Moderma first, obviously, to see how that goes, but I refuse to get a tattoo on my ass. Like, it's a no for me. It's really a no for me, especially where they're at. It'll have to be something really big to make it connect. Um, but I've been, I don't know, I'm trying to just update you guys as much as I can um, from what's been going on in the past couple weeks. But honestly, I've just been home chilling. Um, I'm still feeding my fat, as you should. I In the beginning, I was feeding my fat really long, eating, like ordering a bunch of DoorDash, Popeyes, Chinese food trying to fatten myself up now I'm doing it more the healthier way like avocado rice beans chicken salmon you know veggie shit like that um pasta um but feeding the fat and I do drink extra feeding the fat does cause you to gain weight in other areas you don't want to which obviously my lipo like my arms are getting bigger and a little double chin now because I'm eating way more calories to feed my ass but these obviously I didn't get arm lipo so this is gonna get fat um I will post pictures showing every single, like I took pictures every single process. So I'll show you guys like one week pick, two week pick, three week pick, four week pick and so forth. Also We're about to find somebody. My Instagram, I have a highlight that says BBL journey, and every single thing you would need to know the, the video of the drains, the recovery house, how I feed my fat, who I went to, um, how I get dressed, how I put on foams. Uh, things I recommend for post-op um, recovery, little like gadgets such as these and accessories, um, plenty of things. Now I'm at the point where my massage girl are doing laser lipo. It is six weeks post-op today, and we're really focusing on the lower back to really help her butt pop, which is obviously working. Radio frequency and cavitation to help tighten the skin and kill any fat cells in my stomach. Um, we're not doing vacuum therapy yet. I'm in behind, but we're still doing lymphatic drainage manually with hands alongside everything. At this point, I only need to get my massages twice a week, she told me. Um, when you're first post-op, you need to be getting one every single day for the first two weeks. Then after that, we did three times a week. So now that I'm five weeks, we're down to two times a week. And I plan to go to her all the way to six months, you know, to get my maximum result. Um, but yeah, that was just a quick update. If you have any questions, I will promise, I promise I'll start doing more vlogs at least and videos so you guys get an everyday update. If something does come up or like just to really so right now, I feel like my mind's all over the place. Like, I feel like if I was in the moment recording week by week, as I should have been, you would get a more detailed description of that week. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll leave all the links to um, the BBL furniture from Recovery Bay. And I'll leave my Instagram link below. And thank you so much for watching.